This presentation we're going to go through how to judge the class of reigning. Reigning is basically a scored class and it goes on the basis of 0 to infinity. 70 is considered an average score of reigning and so between the maneuver scores and penalty points that we're going to assess, and I'll talk about those in a minute, everything is added or subtracted from 70. Maneuver scores basically evaluate how the quality of each of the maneuver that a horse performs and penalty points are only assessed if a horse does certain things incorrectly and those are always on a negative basis. And I'll go through both the maneuver and penalty points here in just a minute. I'll show you the score sheet that's used for reigning and also at this link to this website um, we also have various other ranking sheets that an individual can use when they're judging reigning. Here's an example of the scorecard from the National Rain Horse Association. You put the exhibitor number in this box here. The penalty points are only assessed if a horse occurs something such as that. We'll go through those in a minute, but they're very specific um, penalties uh, that are always on a minus. They go, range from minus one half to minus five and are only assessed if a horse does something incorrectly. These dashed lines represent the various maneuver scores and when you decide what the reigning pattern is, we'll write abbreviations for the various maneuvers up on these dashed lines here. It might be circles to the left, circles to the right, stop and back and so on and so forth. The box here for score goes for the maneuver score. Maneuvers are assessed from only on the quality of what each of the group of maneuvers might be. They can range from zero where it's an average performance to a minus one half, minus one, or minus one half for maneuvers that are, are less than average. For positive maneuvers that are above average, they can range from plus one half, plus one, and plus one and a half. Maneuver scores are more or less somewhat subjective, and, but every time that a horse performs a new maneuver, so in each of these boxes, there will be a maneuver score. Penalties, again, are only assessed if a horse does something incorrectly, and we'll go through those. And so sometimes you'll have a penalty mark, sometimes you won't, and horses certainly can go through a whole uh, reigning pattern with no, maneuver, with no uh, penalty points. These, you'll total the penalties here, take your maneuver scores, and all of these numbers are, will be added or subtracted from 70, which is our average score. So again, we're scored on a basis of 0 to 100, 70 is our average performance, our maneuver scores, um, each pattern will have between 6 and 8 of them, and they go from plus 1.5 to excellent, plus 1 to plus 1.5, for a good, an average performance is considered a zero, minus one half is a poor, minus one, and minus one and a half for extremely poor, and you again will assess the maneuver score each and every time a horse completes the maneuvers. The patterns are broken down into various maneuvers, and they will consist of um, in different combinations of the circles, the spins, the stops, the backs, and the lead changes, and these will often, oftentimes be grouped across the six or eight maneuvers within a reigning pattern. Okay, again, the penalty points are assessed only when a maneuver is done incorrectly. They're going to be points assigned specifically to things that they might do incorrectly with the leads, the spins. There's a penalty point for a break of gate if they're out of lead, and there are also various others that we'll go through. Here's a completed score sheet, and you can see this is exhibitor number 256. These are the maneuvers, and so we had right circles, right spins, left circles, left spins, the figure eight, and so on and so forth. The penalty points are assessed here, maneuver scores are here, and you can see for every box a horse does have a maneuver score. This horse ranged from a zero to a plus half in his right spins, or excuse me, his right circles, a minus half in his left circles. This horse did incur a half point penalty for his right circles, which as you learn the penalty points most likely was a, uh, was we had a, a delayed change of lead, but they are very specific. All of these scores and numbers are added and subtracted from 70. This exhibitor obviously created, did something incorrectly in his left circles where he occurred a zero score. This is a zero score, so he scored a zero for the entire maneuver. In National Rain Horse Association competition, you are required to finish scoring the horse out. For purposes of a judging contest, that's not really necessary. However, you do still want to make some notations um, about the quality of maneuver quality of maneuvers of those particular horses because they could still be used in a set of oral reasons. So some of the things for the penalty points and the scoring, all right? For a no score, which is even less than a zero score, these are going to be things such as abuse, use of illegal equipment, disrespect, and there's other things in the rule book um, that are identified as a no score. For a score of zero, 
if an exhibitor do, does any of these things and he only does them once and he has a, a zero score for that entire run, use of more than one index finger between the reins if they're ridden with a curved bit um, or a romel. If they're ridden with a bozel or a hack or a, a snaffle bit, then naturally that's different. The use of two hands or changing hands on the reins will result in a zero score. Incorrect use of a romel, and we can explain that um, on face-to-face -face basis. Failure to complete the pattern is written and so they do something incorrectly, such as inclusion of maneuvers and the one, the two that are seen most often is that the horse will back more than two strides as he's come down to stop um, or sometimes um, sitting in the middle they might back more than two strides. Two strides is really four steps and so you'll look to count one, two, three, four as he steps back and if he steps a fifth step back, then that is considered an inclusion of maneuver. In addition, turns of more than 90 degrees, uh, this might be when they're coming to exit a rollback um, in different places where they've stopped, and so that is, um, or also in your spins, that is considered an inclusion of maneuver. Also, failure, also in this area of a zero score would be if they perform the maneuvers out of order. Some other things that will get a, an exhibitor in a particular pattern a score of zero. Equipment failure that delays the completion of the pattern. They might shake their head and knock their bridle off. Um, a rein might break, things such as that. Running away or failing to guide. Follow the ground of the horse and rider. I'll show you some of these as far as jog jogging in excess of half the circle or half the length of the arena when they're supposed to start, start, um, start in a circle. Um, or exiting a rollback or a pivot, and also if they overspin by more than a quarter of a turn. And we'll show you some of those diagrams here in just a second. A little bit um, so you understand how they can handle their reins. They can untangle the excess rein because sometimes when a horse spins or stops or does some things fast, the tail of the reins might end up on both sides or on the incorrect side. So they can untangle their reins when um, when it can prevent the rider from continuing their pattern, the excess rein can be straightened without affecting the performance of the horse. It's done at an appropriate time in the pattern. And generally, it's pretty much the rule of thumb that the horse has to be stopped before you can go ahead and, and correct um, some of the rein issues. All right, with the specific penalties, the five point penalties. Any time a rider incurs these, and they will assess a five point penalty each and every time it happens, is if the rider spurs the horse in front of the cinch, if they use their free hand to instill fear or praise. And so, for example, any time they might pat their horse on the neck, that is considered instilling praise, and that will incur a five point penalty. Holding on to the saddle with the free hand, sometimes you have some folks that will hold on to the back, um, to the skirt of the saddle or the horn. Each time they do that, that is a five point penalty. This is one we do see from time to time where they kick, they bite, they buck, or they rear. The kick and the rear probably are the two most common ones. And again, any time they do any of these, it's assessed a five-point penalty. So if they kick out twice, those are considered two five-point penalties. Moving on to the two-point penalties, if they freeze in a spin or, or a rollback, so for example, they're in a spin and they don't complete it, but they go ahead and, and get it done or they kind of half stop, then that is considered a two-point freeze. A break of gate. Remember, in no reining pattern is there a trot, so if they're running their circles um, or do some, or um, running the circles or doing anything and they break to a trot while they're supposed to already be loping, that's considered a break of gate and is a two-point penalty. If they do not go beyond the markers, you need to be familiar with the pattern that you're using and some require them to stop past the center marker, some of them are past the end markers. And if they do not go beyond the specified marker, that also is assessed at two point pen penalties. Also, if it's a pattern that they're supposed to come and walk in, say walk into the middle and then start, if they don't stop or walk before they take off on the lope, then that's also assessed at two point penalties. There are also patterns where they run in, so they come into the arena and they run in. If they don't stop or walk before ex executing a lope prior to the first marker, that's also assessed at two point penalties. To be honest, the, these two we do not see that, uh, that all that often. However, the first three we also do see, um, you, you will run into those from time to time. So here's a few diagrams that help um, identify where some of these penalties occur. In the spins, we give them about a shoulder's length width with either side of, of this line that they can get stopped in. So it doesn't have to be stopped right on the dime. A little bit of a shoulder's length, shoulder's width, they can get stopped. All right. 
there are either half or one point penalties assessed if they go beyond this this gray area. Excuse me, if they go, go beyond this area here, if they go up to an eighth, which would be in this area here, either overspinning or underspinning, then they are assessed a half point penalty. If they go um, beyond the eighth and up to a quarter, then that's assessed one. If they would go into this quadrant here, then that would be considered an inclusion of maneuver past the 90 degrees, and that would be a score of zero. So here, as I just already mentioned, if they're coming around and they've done their four and they go beyond the fourth, fourth um, into this area here, that would be considered an overspin and that would be a score of zero. However, say this is this is one that is requires four spins and within their third spin, they stop over in here or one of these other areas and then they go ahead and finish it. That's going to be considered the two point freeze um, because they did go ahead and complete it. The lead penalties, don't let these be more confusing than what they need to be. In the center, as they would be, say, coming around here to the center, and the lead change is always supposed to be the, at the center, if they get, have a little bit of a box here where they can get the lead change in, but if it's delayed by one stride, um, then it is a half point penalty. Okay? Then you have a one point penalty for each quarter of circle that they're in. And so if it goes beyond that, ha that one, um, one stride area and into this quarter that's assessed one po a one point penalty then for each quarter it's one penalty point so if they're still out of lead in this quarter here then that's assessed another penalty or a cumulative two this would be a cumulative three and this would be a cumulative four um, and those are cum cumulative so if a rider goes two full circles in the incorrect lead he would have really a total of eight penalty points now these circles are, are really made, um, drawn as very um, round figure eights. We know that many folks come, come and will go across the diagonal. That is perfectly fine. They don't have to be excessively round. However, the best changes are right here in the center. And you do have um, the center point where it needs to be. So you just have to use a little bit of a guide when that, when that half point penalty comes into play. And if they're clearly past um, the one stride area, then the one point penalty will come into play. On rundowns, remember that whenever a horse is on a straightaway, such as here or here, there no no lead is required. So they can be on the inside or the outside lead, the right or the left lead, and it does not make any difference. Anytime they enter into a curve, then they have to be on the inside lead. And so as when they come here from A to B, if they're not on the inside lead, then it's a one point penalty. Then from B to C, if they're still on the incorrect lead, it's a one point penalty. Um, if they come around here and from A to B they're correct, they get into B and they pop out of lead and pop back with a flying change that again would be out of lead for one quarter, so that would be a one point penalty. But again, when they come out on the straightaway, and we will have horses be change leads on the straightaway, the lead does not matter. Okay, this is a pattern where a horse comes in and he comes around the uh, around here a circle, all right, comes around here and it's supposed to go down the center, all right, and it, the pattern calls for a flying change. And so again, we have that one stride rule. So if he's past the one stride, it's assessed one point penalty. If he's beyond the one stride and on the straightaway, um, beyond one stride, then it's going to be a one point penalty. If he never corrects the lead and is never on the, the 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 required lead as specified by the pattern, then that goes into a two point penalty. Jogging. Remember, basically, we never jog in raining. All right. So when they're starting a circle, circle or exiting a rollback, and they might jog up to two strides, it's a half a point. When they um, jog beyond two strides, but less than half the circle or half the length of the arena, then it's a deduction of two points. And so. The thing to always look at and what the, they will tell us is that when a horse comes down and stops and say he needs to roll back and look for his back feet and if his back feet are jogging then that horse is considered jogging. He might be climbing and grabbing the ground a little bit in front. But up to two strides it's a half point. Beyond two strides um, it's going to be two so long as he gets into, that, into the lope, or into the lope um, before he's gone too far. 
Here's a little schematic that I put in as far as coming in on a jogging on, on a run in. Okay, so this is a pattern that he's coming from this end. This is our first marker, center marker, and third marker. They're running down in this direction. Okay, if he's still jogging by the time he needs to be into his lope before he reaches the first marker. So if this horse on this line here comes up and he's jogging, but he gets to his lope before this first marker, there's no penalty. All right, if he jogs here a little bit and gets into his, um, is, is beyond this and up to the center marker before he kicks into that lope, then that's going to be a two point penalty. If he's still loping, is still jogging, excuse me, past the center marker, then that's going to be considered a score of zero and he's off pattern. In a canter departure also, um, say they've spun and they're supposed to take off, okay, similar kinds of things apply. If it's um, a half point if it's up to th between the first two strides, um, two points beyond two strides, and a zero beyond half the length of the circle. So really the pretty much the same principle applies across the bo board. When they're coming up and exiting a rollback and this horse is run down here, he stops and he rolls back. Okay, again, it's a half point penalty if he jogs up to two strides. If it's beyond two strides but before half the length of the arena, it's a two point penalty. And if it's beyond that half point area of the arena, it's, he's going to be considered off pattern or a score of zero. <clears throat> um, sometimes we have horses that come in and are in their circle and they might stop. Okay, as they're running their circles. So if they stop in the first quarter of a circle after the canter departure, okay, it's not going to be con considered an inclusion of a maneuver, but more or less a break of a gate, so it would be a two point penalty. Okay, so they come in here and they lope off and they, they break to a trot, or actually some of them will come down. If they break to a trot, it's a two point penalty, but some will actually kind of do a half halt or a stop and go on. So that also would be considered a, um, an inclusion of, excuse me, be considered a break of gate and would be assessed a two point penalty. Okay, also on the approach of the stop and roll back, um, as they're running down, say this is our fence down here and they run down the fence, okay, they're supposed to be a minimum of 20 feet off of this fence and if they're too close to the fence it's considered a half point penalty. So they need to run down a comfortable distance and if they're excessively close you're going to assess them a half point penalty for being too close to the fence. So again, here's a conclusion of a completed off scorecard and you can see we have the maneuver scores here and those are basically from plus half uh, up through plus one and a half, from minus half, uh, a zero minus half to minus, minus one and a half on the quality of the maneuver. Our penalty points are only assessed up in the top box here and they're only going to occur if they happen. You don't really need to put a zero there or excuse me, a minus there because they're always going to be on the negative. And all of these scores are going to be added or subtracted from 70. So this horse ended up with a 70 and a half if you add and subtract these things. I often will just kind of let them cancel out. So to me, the, these two would cancel, these two would cancel. Um, and then I have plus, um, this is a one point penalty which would cancel there. Um, and so would end up coming up and being, let's see, these coming up and being um, a, seven, uh, a 70 and a half if you cancel everything out. Remember if they do something incorrectly that sends them off course, then that would be a zero there. Sometimes I put a zero around the whole thing and then they would be an overall a zero score. This horse did a very nice job. He occurred a few penalties, um, but you can see it was plus on a lot of things. This is just the penalties here. You can add the composite down here, but he ends up with a score of 75. So when we're doing classes as we will be doing for judging contest purposes, we want to be sure that you total each run as they're completed. We also will make some of these um, grids and stuff in our notebooks so you can also write some notes and take some notations down to help remind you as you're preparing a set of oral reasons as far as what they did, positive or negative, and especially what some of those penalties were. So that just goes through some of the basic things as far as evaluating reining, showing you trying to describe some of what the penalties are and um, the difference between the p penalty and maneuver scores.